Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United face a potential transfer battle for Erling Haaland. Now Erling Haaland will leave Borussia Dortmund for £78 million this summer. That's according to Sky Sports. His agent, Minio Riola, has said that only four clubs in England can afford Erling Haaland. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would love to sign Erling Haaland. It'd be good to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer reunite with the player. Solskjaer knows the player really, really well. Because Solskjaer was the one that gave Erling Haaland his debut at just the age of 16 at Mulder. Solskjaer said the other week that he's following Erling Haaland's progress and he made a new Erling Haaland transfer admission and opened up on the Erling Haaland relationship. Now, earlier on this season, Erling Haaland's father was talking about his son's transfer links to Man United. Back in December 2019, Solskjaer and Woodward went up to Norway to meet up with Erling Haaland to negotiate a possible move to Man United. Chelsea and Manchester City are also interested in him. Since, ha since Haaland's arrival at Dortmund, he has been a revelation. He's been at Borussia Dortmund now over a year. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him. He's got a contract with Dortmund until 2024. He has a £68 million release clause, but that doesn't become active until next year. And he's still got a lot of development in him. So that's a bit more news on Erling Haaland. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer recently said that he wants three summer signings. He said he's set to sit down with Ed Woodward to negotiate our business in the next couple of weeks. Now, a centre-half and a forward are the two priorities. Solskjaer recently confirmed that he has got the backing of the owners to get the players that he wants to recommend in. Our transfer budget has recently been revealed. And I don't think it's a lot... What a lot. It's not a lot of what Manchester United fans expected. Um, earlier on today, I give you the news on Jadon Sancho. It says that uh, Man United still want Jadon Sancho in the summer transfer window. Recent narrative said that we've called our interest in Sancho due to Mason Greenwood. Now, Dortmund said they're expecting Sancho to leave in the summer. He's going to be av available for a reduced fee. Uh, recently, £60 million was quoted. It actually said we believe we can get him for just £50 million. He says Dortmund will sell Jadon Sancho this summer on one condition. That's if they can keep Erling Haaland, but... Dortmund face a summer of transfer exits. Um, it came out the other week and said Dortmund could sell up to eight players in the summer to raise funds. Bild said earlier on this season that Dortmund 
reduced their asking price for Sancho to £88 million. Last summer, he was our number one priority target. Borussia Dortmund's valuation was £108 million. We was not willing to meet that valuation. But he said a few times last summer that the personal terms had been agreed and the agent fees had been agreed and even a contract had been agreed. Uh, Fabrizio Romano, who's a very reliable Italian journalist, he's spoken a lot about the Sancho saga and so too has built Christian Fark. Dortmund made it clear to us last summer that we hadn't till the 10th of August to sign the player. We missed out on that deadline, so Sancho remained at Dortmund. Earlier on this season, he made an admission, Sancho, saying that he has enjoyed a difficult season at Dortmund. But analysing the vast majority of his career at Dortmund, he has been very, very consistent. This is his fourth season with Dortmund. He's got a contract with them until 2023. Dortmund paid just £8 million for him from Man City back in 2017. Yesterday, I give you an update on Declan Rice. Declan Rice came out and said that he wants Jesse Lingard to stay at West Ham beyond this season. Rice also said West Ham's current squad is the best he's ever been in. Now, we waiting for Declan Rice. He said earlier on this season from ESPN, we were set to rival Chelsea for him. It also said that West Ham were considering lowering their asking price for Declan Rice to £50 million. Initially, West Ham value him at £80 million. Chelsea wanted him uh, when they had Frank Lampard because Declan Rice was Frank Lampard's top target and Frank Lampard was infuriated when he missed out on him. But I'd take Declan Rice at Man United. You know, he's well proven in the Premier League. You know, he gets forward well. He breaks up the play well. Got a lot of development in him. But I don't see him leaving West Ham in the summer. Reflects on what he said recently. He's been at West Ham for a while now. He's got a contract at West Ham until 2024. There's also an option to extend for a further 12 months. Before he was at West Ham, he was at Chelsea. He was in their youth setup for several years. Predominantly a holding midfielder, but can be deployed as a centre half. Uh, Jules Conde, he's been on our agenda and the last time I read up it said he's our top target for the summer. La Razion, which is a Spanish outlet, they recently said we are considered the favourites to sign Jules Conde and we are prepared to pay £61 million for him. You know, he's a centre-half, do you think he'd go well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line? His performances for Sevilla this season have been outstanding. He's played 70-odd games. He's got a contract with Sevilla until 2024. Sevilla paid £22 million for him from Bordeaux in the summer of 2019. It said the other week that we had a five-man centre-back shortlist. Um, apparently, we are prepared to smash our transfer record this summer and Ed Woodward is set to hand Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a huge war chest to sign top players in all areas. Now, this year's summer transfer window is the biggest in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career because we do need to make more signings. Now, like I said to you, it was a disappointing January transfer window because we only saw one arrival and that was a mad dialogue triori. But Solskjaer did say a few times during the January transfer window that he wasn't expecting any signings. We were focusing a lot more on the outgoings in January rather than the incomings. And to Solskjaer's credit, he has got rid of a lot of the deadwood now since he got recommended 
in. But I'm expecting the board to back him in the summer because I don't think the board have backed Solskjaer enough so far. And, you know, Woodward said towards the end of last year he'll back Solskjaer with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows and he's come out to show his support for Rolly several times. The board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years. I'd be very, very happy if we could recommend the director of football in. We've been in for the director of football now for a while, but if we get one in, you know, Solskjaer, who will get more help, you know, in the transfer market. I said if we are to get a director of football in, we need someone who's got that experience and someone who... It would be beneficial as well if we've got someone who knows the culture of the club. You know, it is one of the structural changes that we do need. Few names have been linked with that director's role. Solskjaer has endured four transfer windows so far as permanent Man United manager. Yeah, he has made good signings. He's spent over £200 million, but obviously hasn't got all the players that I wanted to recommend in so far. Um, I think more players are going to leave Man United in the summer transfer window. Uh, like I said, I think there's a good chance that Juan Mata will leave in the summer. Juan Mata doesn't really get in our team a lot now, but he's done well in the games he's played in this season. Earlier on this season, Juan Mata rejected an 18 million a year contract offer to play in Sergio Arabia. Matt has, had a, Matt has had a good career at Man United. He's been at the club over six years. He's made over 200 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 50 goals. We got one Matt having a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2014. His current contract expires in the summer. We do have an option to trigger his contract for a further year. And he's now, what, 34 years of age. One Matt has lost that yard of pace. Matic, I think there's a chance we'll offload him in the summer. He isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but Matic still gets his chances. And as you all know, I've always had my reservations about Matic because he's always been a slow player and he's aging up now, isn't he? But he's had some good games as a Man United player. Matic has been at the club now almost four years. We got Matic in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. Um, I think he signed a new three-year deal, by the way, before the start of this season. Uh, Phil Jones, I'm expecting him to leave this year. I'm surprised he didn't leave in January, but Solskjaer came out and said that Phil Jones is going to be given a second chance. Jones doesn't get in our team. Um, he's been out of injury for over a year. This is Phil Jones' 10th season at Man United. He's been a long servant. He's the only outfield player that's still here from the Alex Ferguson era. I'm expecting to offload Romero. Now, Solskjaer recently said that he's prepared to sell either De Gea or Dean Henderson in the summer. Where we've been looking at Donnarumma from AC Milan as a possible replacement for De Gea, because uh, Donnarumma could be convinced to leave AC Milan in the summer, and we've been in for Donnarumma before. I heard that three clubs are in for De Gea. Uh, Solskjaer's recently warned De Gea that his number one jersey is under threat. And Paul Scholes has come out recently and said that De Gea is becoming a real problem for Man United. And Gary Neville came out the other week and said Solskjaer must deal with the goalkeeper situation because he's facing a goalkeeping dilemma. You know, De Gea will remain our number one for at least this season. You know, this is De Gea's... 10th season at Manchester United, so he has been a long servant. Uh, last couple of years, he's made calamitous mistakes and reflects on that he's become a liability. 
But a few years ago, De Gea was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. But, you know, we sell De Gea in the summer transfer window. I think we can get from between 50 to £60 million. Pounds. If you'd have asked me a few years ago, I'd have turned around and said we'd probably get like £100 million. Pounds. Well, from between 90 to £100 million. Pounds. De Gea is now 30, isn't he? So he is ageing up. And uh, Dean Henderson, he's threatened to quit Manchester United if he's not assured the number one role. We've revealed our asking price for Dean Henderson after he's had talks with Solskjaer. Uh, we're demanding £40 million. And three clubs are in for Dean Henderson. That's Chelsea, West Ham and Tottenham. Uh, Solskjaer admitted not so long ago that it's becoming more and more difficult to leave Dean Henderson out of the side. Because I think Dean Henderson is now reliable enough to become our number one because he has got that experience behind him. He endured two successful loans with Sheffield United. And Dean Henderson's got a lot of development in him. He's like, what, seven, seven and a half years younger than De Gea. And I still think there's a good chance that we'll sell Paul Pogba in the summer transfer window. Um, I think we should sell Anthony Martial in the summer. Uh, because he's been out of form for the vast majority of this season and he doesn't have a long-term future, Man United, Anthony Martial. So who will our long-term number nine be? Uh, some people are saying we should sell Victor Lindelof in the summer because he's a liability. So there you go. But these are players that have really, really improved at Manchester United. You know, Luke Shaw, he's really, really improved. Um, he's getting forward well. He's getting into good positions. He's putting good crosses into the box. Defensively, he's been superb. And Luke Shaw's had a good career at Man United. You know, he's been with us now over six years. The only thing that's let it down is the injuries he's had. But yes, do remains our first choice left back despite the arrival of Alex Tellez last summer. Luke Shaw gets forward better than Alex Tellez. Um, I think Tellez has done well in the games he's played in. Well, most of them anyway. But Tellez has played nowhere near as much as I expected. We've got Tellez in a deal worth £15.4 million. Eric Bay, um, I've been impressed with him in the games he's played in this season. I think... Him and Harry Maguire complement each other well in our back line. I certainly prefer Bay to Lindelof, but Bay is too injury prone. Uh, I've been impressed with Dean Henderson in the games he's played in this season. I've been impressed with Anwan Wambasaka this season because he's enjoyed good games, you know, where he's actually got forward and he's showed more attacking intent. He's got in good positions, he's put good crosses into the box, and defensively, Anwan Wambasaka has been very good. He's always been good defensively. This is Anwan Bissaka's second full season at Man United. We've got Anwan Bissaka in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace in the summer of 2019. Uh, Fred, um, he's really, really improving. Um, he's passing the ball better. He's getting forward more and he breaks up the play well. Fred has been at the club now for a few years. Uh, we did get Fred in the deal worth £52 million from Shakhtar Donetsk. He's made over 100 appearances now for Man United in all competitions. Uh, Paul Pobre has done very, very well in recent months. Before he, before he obviously got this fight injury. You know, he's been enjoying the best period in his Man United career. Yeah, uh, Paul Pobre has got a thigh injury um, at the moment. Solskjaer did confirm prior to the game against Real Sociedad in the Europa League first led that Paul Pobre is going to be out for the rest of February. So I'm expecting Paul Pobre back in early March. Uh, but you can say he is a big miss because we do lack quality in that midfield without him. 
earlier on this season Pob had an ankle injury and he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury so he has sustained a few injuries now at Man United. Yeah, like I said, Paul Pobras had a long-running transfer saga. You know, he's been linked to the move to Real Madrid. Uh, PSG have been in for him. And Juventus have been in for him. I think there's a good chance that Paul Pogba will go back to Juventus because he did enjoy four good years with them before he rejoined us. And narratives from Italy said that Juventus offered us four players in exchange for Paul Pogba. We had revealed our asking price for him. It's one hundred million pounds. Minio Riola is desperate to get his client out of the football club in the summer. Minio Riola doesn't have a good relationship with us, and obviously he's been criticised a few times. Minio Riola recently admitted he's working quietly on Paul Popper's transfer to avoid offence. And he made the announcement back in December regarding Popper and Solskjaer's Fioris with Mini Oriola's announcement because it was just before the game against Leipzig in the Champions League. We've already held talks with Paul Popper over, Paul Popper over his future and Solskjaer said the other week that Paul Popper's happy and he suggested he could sign a new contract. Back in January, it said Paul Pop was considering making a U-turn at the club and he contradicted his agent, Minio Riola, for the second time. But his future is on hold until the end of the season. Pop is our most expensive sign at the moment, £89 million. Earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract on Man United until June 2022. Uh, Donny van der Beek, he's a good player when he plays. But he's played nowhere near as much as I expected. You know, most of Donny van der Beek's appearances have come from the bench. He's only started two games in the league so far this season. Uh, Solskjaer made an admission earlier on this season. saying that Donny van der Beek is unhappy at the club because of his lack of game time, but he's promised him more game time at Man United. Being out of a muscle injury recently, we got Donny van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million and he can play in three different roles. Um, at Tommy Way, you know, he's enjoyed good games this season. He's been part of the club for several years, just after the first lockdown, that Tom Inway signed a five-year contract on Man United. He's been out of a knock recently. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, he's an exceptional player and he's made the difference in the team. In most of his games at Man United, he's been very, very consistent. There's only been a few games where he has looked off the pace, Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes has won Player of the Month now quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Fernandez did say on his 12-month anniversary that he's planning on spending many years at Manchester United. Now, Mason Greenwood, um, he's done really, really well since he broke into our first-team squad and he's done well recently uh, despite scoring. Not so long ago, Mason Greenwood signed a new four-year contract with Manchester United. Most of the time he plays on that right. Uh, Medicine Cavani, he's made a fantastic impact since he's come in. Cavani's missed the last two games with injury. Uh, Cavani's going to be staying, I think, at Man United for next season. Because Cavani said he wants to stay at Man United for next season. And Solskjaer has recently said that Edison Cavani is set for contract extension talks. 
I presume will trigger that one-year extension on his contract. And Marcus Rashford, I've been very, very impressed with him. We'll just need to keep Marcus Rashford out wide on the left because that's where he's more effective. So, yeah. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I think he's made very, very good progress at Man United in the last year or so. You know, there's been some games where he's got the best out of the players. We've seen performances improve. We've got a fantastic away record in the Premier League under him. You know, we haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. We're unbeaten in our last nine away games in all competitions. Uh, Solskjaer, as well, he's got us to the FA Cup quarter-finals. It will be a tough game against Leicester. He's got us to the Europa League last 16. Uh, got us to the EFL Cup semi-final this season. Lost to Man City 2-0. Oli did well last season in his first full season at the club. Guided us to three semi-finals. Got us qualification for the Champions League. And got us third. Second highest we've finished since the Ferguson era. Uh, we've won more games at Old Trafford recently. But... Uh, we've been far better away from home than we have been at home. You know, all our defeats have actually come at Old Trafford this season. You know, we are second in the Premier League. Uh, like I've said, Solskjaer must win a trophy as Manchester United manager to avoid the sack and the FA Cup and the Europa League is a chance of a trophy. We haven't won a trophy since 2017. Um, a club of our stature need to be winning trophies. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said after our 3-1 win against Newcastle, that we are still in the title race despite the 10 point gap. He said the same thing after the 1 1 draw of West Brom that we are still in the title race and will not settle for second in the title race. We're not winning the league this season, Man City are. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. We'll win another title at some point, but I don't know when. Top four is now our aim and I can almost assure that we will finish in the top four. We need to qualify for the Champions League anyway so we can attract players to the highest level. you got to say Solskjaer is the best manager since Ferguson. You know, this is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's second full season. And if we finish in the top three, top two and we win a trophy, I think that will represent a good season for us and then that will give us something to build on going on into next season. Reflecting now on Solskjaer's being at the club, he has gained some managerial experience and he's learnt quite a bit on the job. You know, he's been Man United manager now over two years. I think Solskjaer will sign a new contract at the end of the season. He recently said that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's future is in doubt because he admitted that nobody spoke to him over a new contract. But he said a few weeks ago that we'll wait until the end of the season to begin contract talks with Ole. Says we could offer him a new two year deal on one condition, that's if we qualify for the Champions League. Solskjaer's into the final 18 months of his current contract. We appointed Solskjaer in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho, and he's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. You know, Solskjaer is inheriting players from other managerial eras. 
But yeah, Solskjaer's been criticised a lot as Man United manager. And there's been a lot of United fans demanding him out. Like I said, I'm only in. We have enjoyed bad periods under him and we've also enjoyed good periods under him. He's our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. We've sat three managers since Ferguson. That was Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.